And here we have the saddle. Um, it's very important to stone so that it is completely free of burrs, so you don't uh, damage your plate. And then uh, clean off. Be especially careful about this. Uh, as we spoke, this um, underside is not going to be uh, meddled with. I mean, I will not scrape that in because the bed itself will not be scraped or machined ground. But uh, on the other side, uh, we have, a, at least I suspect that the flats here are worn. And uh, we need to verify the overall geometry. So a general inspection here with the service uh, nice. The overall uh, machining quality here is very good. So I s assume we can use most of the surfaces as references. But we need to prove that. And um, therefore, uh, use the time here for a general inspection will serve us uh, good when we move into the final stages of the of this project. I use my time here to uh, apply different uh, tools, and uh, for instance, so to show, um, I use a micrometer to measure the dimensions of the different parts of the saddle and uh, this is because this saddle is uh, as I said high quality and uh, everything that was done with the ways I suspect they also did the same uh, machining operations uh, with the other uh, parts of the saddle so there are a lot of potential surfaces that uh, are unworn here that could be used as references so need to prove that and the the better your understanding of the, all this is, the, I think, uh, at least from my, to my eye, in my eyes, the better your, your chances of, of um, uh, obtaining uh, whatever is from the original geometry and then doing your work the best way you can. So I also use, of course, uh, uh, straight edges and then um, clock gauges and all the other stuff, levels, but at least just to show micrometers. And here we see the straight edge bridged from the ends and then use a feely using feely gauges. That's also the method uh, or an, a method I use a lot. And uh, then of course applying a, a gauge here, a dial gauge. I've set the, the piece on two blocks of ex exactly the same height, so I know that I can use uh, um, the tops here as uh, towards the surface, measure towards the surface. Therefore, also I can use this um, long straight edge to bridge over from the two onborn sides and then measure on this one. And what I'm trying here is, uh, of course, to find the wear, but also then to, f to verify that uh, these surfaces are really useful as references and uh, different means, then, and then each method then will validate one the other. So um, you can measure here to find out both sides, for instance, if this is really. Um, zero to the plate or not then judging that uh, then comparing that with um, for instance the, the top of the beam there uh, to see oh. possibly could be somewhere but at least then all these uh, uh, towards one another comparative measurements will ultimately then provide you with a better uh, uh, overall judgment of the situation so that you can find out really, as I said, the surfaces and also then the wear For long? to the best of your ability. Hmm. And then I have blued up uh, the flats to see and uh, I think we're talking about three, four uh, hundredths of a millimeter difference uh, wear in the middle there. You see high on the ends, a little bit more worn towards the one end than the other. Then I also used a guesstimator I mean, to get an overall uh, judgment. I'd like to find out, so at least I know 
if I'm in the ballpark. So I, I find the lowest end and then uh, measure, uh, trying to find the lowest and then set zero there. And then I measure and then from this lowest do the same in the middle. So if you pay close attention there, you'll see I move it back and forth until I get the final reading. I think we ended up at some three hundredths of a millimeter in the middle there com as compared to the, to the end. And measuring at the end. So here again, going up, down zero, one, two, and three, and four. So about four hundredths were at this end too. So seemingly somewhere in the middle and towards the end here, but we don't want to, uh, to come to a conclusion yet. We still want to find some alternative way to measure. We have now arrived at a, an important part of the explanation, at least uh, I want to emphasize this. I've used uh, these blocks, you see, uh, to stand off the piece because it was a little bit of protrusion under. I should have used, of course, a three-point method. But since these uh, three points I have are uh, really too small for this piece, I did not want to, to really just stand them on those. But anyway, that's the best method to balance out the piece. But I know that the, uh, the flats I've used are flat, a little bit hollow there in the middle, about a hundred of a millimeter or so, but they function okay. So I can verify the geometry, use everything uh, onto the plate and measure to find the references. And also then after finding the references and verifying uh, and using those later on, certifying that, that they can be used as references, I then go on to use um, the setup here to measure, as I show here with the pins. And then I call this a compound measurement because uh, the wear is here then both in the doll tail section and in the flat. And uh, towards the end there, uh, most of the wear is in the doll tail, I think it was. And then when I move uh, from uh, the end to uh, more to the middle, we will then really measure the wear in the flats, which we also have proven with uh, bluing up. So and we, when we move to the end again and to the other end, we will see then the wear mostly from the, the dovetail section. So that's also important to know that this is a compound measurement so that I can verify this with others. Now we are onto the more practical purposes of having all these references. You can see here I put the, the saddle onto the side. I know this is flat, I know my straight edge is flat. Then I know I can use these now proved as reference surfaces for anchoring points for the straight edge. And then uh, use the straight edge to bridge across the gap there, of course. And that being uh, so, uh, I have a possibility now to, to run the indicator then to the dovetail directly there on top and do the same on the on the uh, on the other dovetail to that reference which I know is is useful. And measuring this dovetail towards the plate here I find that this is actually flat. There is nowhere almost at all. Maybe one hundredth of a millimeter. And then uh, I put up the test piece, very liberal blue, just to see not to scrape here, but just to see uh, and uh, detect the wear, or to show the wear. Um, I've used a longer tested uh, test piece, sorry, a straight edge, and um, only relegated to use this for some trials, but the trouble with using a shorter test piece is that you can really just, you know, get any <coughs> kind of coverage you want because it <coughs> it will follow the curvature of the surface. So that's uh, a no-no. And then of course, uh, having the blue there, I can then go 
to measure the wear with the indicator here and then see uh, verifying that when I get to the blue there it is worn and the amount of wear is here five or six hundredths of a millimeter in that uh, region and here I put the straight edge as a using it as a guide really and then um, using the dial test indicator to run down the whole length and then finding the wear and then of course doing this this will be another way uh, the, instead of running the indicator from the middle section there to the worn section and then now then comparing it to the plate then um, you can see if these measurements then correlate with one another and if not of course then you might have a measurement setup error and the third way which I also showed was the use of the micrometers here so I guess I could then measure on the ends here to verify that also if that uh, corresponded to my findings so that all measurements correlate and if not find out what's wrong as Richard say be a detective and here a close-up of the same set zero there really should have set zero on the lowest area but anyway if we set zero here at the where it blew up and then you can see going down we have somewhere not a lot now but creeping up and here I show the Kingway uh, which is a method of using a level and then comparing two uh, sides of this uh, in this case the surfaces towards the dovetails there I should have used this and this is very preferable so uh, if I had the means to do that I would have done it I used these other methods but if you have one of those or could make one then use it